Lightfall's legendary campaign is the latest high challenge, high reward story quest in Destiny 2. This quick guide will provide an overview of what to expect and what to bring to the fight to make sure your legendary clear is a breeze. There are no story spoiler here, so let's dive right in. For completing the legendary campaign, you'll earn a few bonus rewards, a new piece of exotic armor for your class, a full 8-piece bundle of Power 1770 gear, 8 upgrade modules to infuse them, 300 additional strand meditations, a currency for unlocking strand subclass abilities, and the Sanctuary of Nephilim emblem. The term legendary isn't just for show, here are the modifiers that make this campaign a challenge. Legendary spawns heavily shielded and highly aggressive enemies in great numbers. Chaff disables player radar. Galvanized gives combatants more health and makes them difficult to stun using unstoppable abilities. Multiplicity scales combat difficulty and revive tokens based on fire team size. With a full fire team, each player has only one revive token and 40 seconds to revive down players per darkness zone encounter. If any players are dead when the revive timer reaches zero, the fire team will wipe. Metal locks every mission at a fixed difficulty. It's possible to be underleveled, but not overleveled. You'll always be 15 power lower than enemies. Between campaign missions, if your power is not at the recommended level, break off to complete Neomuna quests or ritual activities to earn higher level gear. Once you've infused your gear to the recommended level, jump back in. To plan a build, you first need to know that you will not unlock Strand until after you complete the Lightfall campaign. With that in mind, stick with any builds you already enjoy. Here are some suggestions. Hunters, Night Stalker with either Shadow Shot, Trapper's Ambush, and Echo of Obscurity. Exotic Wormhusk Crown for health regeneration. Warlocks, Dawnblade with Well of Radiance and Healing Rits. Exotic, the Stag for extra Rift Energy. Titan, Sentinel with Ward of Dawn and Bastion. Exotic, Heart of Inmost Light. Yes, it was nerfed, but you want as many barricades as you can get. I suggest these class neutral exotics because while you may not have strand unlocked, some missions will change your subclass to strand temporarily. This is called strand empowerment. This way your exotics will still benefit you even when your subclass switches. Armor and mods. There are tons of new mods and combinations that are still being figured out and abilities got nerfed in general, but here's what worked in my runs. Make high resilience your priority. High recovery and discipline are close seconds depending on your build. Ammo finder mods spawn more heavier special and ammo scouts let you share that with a fire team. Proximity ward grants an overshield when performing a finisher. Stack this with void's echo of obscurity to get shielded and go invisible while taking out enemies. The new armor charge system replaces charge with light and has some stellar applications. Equip an armor charge mod to activate the system, gaining one armor charge when picking up an orb of power. Emergency reinforcement consumes up to three stacks to grant bonus resilience when player shields are broken. Font of Endurance grants bonus resilience just for having stacks of armor charge, but those stacks now decay. Weapon surge mods grant stacking damage bonuses to weapons of the select damage type. To enhance these effects, use charged up and stacks on stacks to increase your armor charge limit from three to six. Weapons! Kinetic weapon buffs have made kinetic exotics top choices for steady damage output. Outbreak perfected in Revision Zero are workhorses. Arbalest does almost enough damage to feel like a heavy, but Wither Horde is my personal favorite thanks to its very high damage over time on bosses, mini bosses, and all around tanky enemies. For elemental damage types, focus on weapons that apply chaining or crowd control effects. Perks like Chill Clip, Volt Shot, and Incandescent, or Void Weapons with the Seasoned Artifact's Volatile Flow. Especially when switching subclasses, having steady crowd control options is very helpful. Heavies, the Linear Fusion Rifle nerf wasn't enough. These are still great options, especially for bosses and tormentors. Sleeper Simulant also was not affected by the nerf. And the new wave frame heavy grenade launcher dimensional hip trichoid is great for ad clear. Let's talk about the new enemies. Shadow Legion Cabal carry darkness tech packs. These units have yellow overshields and drop the tech packs on death. Dropped packs create a sphere of energy that shields nearby enemies. Destroy the packs to remove the shields. Tormentors are a new mini boss enemy type. Tormentors are big, but they move very fast. They have strong melee and ranged void attacks, can do a slam that suppresses players, removing double jump abilities and supers, even active ones, and a special melee called Dark Harvest that sucks players in and slowly drains the health, sometimes killing them. If a tormentor's eye glows red, they're targeting a player for Dark Harvest. If your screen is red, they're targeting you. Run. To defeat them, shoot the two glowing yellow crit spots on their shoulders until they break. This reveals a new crit spot on their chest. Use elemental effects such as Stasis Freeze, Strand Suspend, and Void Suppress to limit their movement and attacks. Damage them until dead, or in some cases, finishable. These things are no joke. A lot of enemies are tanky, but these put up a real fight. Each story mission has its own mechanics and surprises, but this quick overview will ensure you're ready for all of it. There are some really fun and challenging encounters that I think you should discover for yourself. I'll be back with a fast guide for the new Root of Nightmares raid after it launches on March 10th. I'll see you then. Get out there, Guardians.